this is Ken Roberts inviting you to listen to another adventure of Casey, crime photographer. Ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Our adventure for tonight, Unlucky Numbers. Afternoon at the Blue Note Cafe, and Casey and Ethelbert are discussing a very delicate situation. It's a very delicate situation, Casey. Gladys wants to marry me, I think. Now, Ethelbert, what makes you think that? She said so. Oh. And what I'm scared of is if I don't ask her to marry me, she'll be mad. If I do ask her to marry me, she'll marry me. Hmm. Casey, what am I going to do? Ethelbert, you must be firm. Yeah? Yes, sir. It's been my experience that once you let a woman get the upper hand, you're done for. Uh, Casey. Be the boss. Casey. Ethelbert. Yeah, and whatever you do, Ethelbert, don't forget. Oh, hello, yeah. Miss Williams. Forget what, Casey? Oh, <laughs> Annie. Annie? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, Ethelbert and I were just, uh, you, you know, that, uh, well, we were just... I know. You were teaching him to be firm. Uh, I once worked for a firm. Don't change the subject, Ethelbert. Anyway, Casey, Burke has an assignment for us. Uh, what? Do a story on the numbers racket. Why? What do you mean, why? Oh, is Burke off on another one of his crusading kicks, clean up the town? All I well, what's know What's so terrible is... about the numbers? If a guy wants to be a sucker, he bets a buck. Maybe he loses the buck. Maybe he wins. I don't know. 550. 550 what? Bucks. If you win, that's the odds. You bet on the last three digits of the treasury balance. Well, what's the harm in that? Well, don't look at me. All I know is Burke said to get the lowdown, something to break it up. So, let's go. Well, go where? How do you start? Well, you could ask Steve Polachek. Oh? Steve Polachek. He plays the numbers. Well, that's a start. Where does this Steve Polachek live? Over on Ward Street, 22, I think it is. Mm-hmm. Oh, come on, Casey. Okay. All right. Of all the silly assignments Burke ever handed us, this is without a... Little brain decide to get a story that'll break up the numbers racket. Of all the silly assignments to send us on, this is without a doubt. Well, this is where I came in. What? <laughs> Ring the bell again. Oh, well, I did. It looks like Polachek's not home. Yes. Oh, hello. Uh, we're looking for Mr. Steve Polachek. Does he live here? It's no home yet. Soon, maybe. You'd like to come in and wait? Oh, thank you. Thanks very much. I, uh, Steve's mother. You are friends with him? No, we're just here about the numbers game. Numbers? Go away. What? Go away. Go fast. Now, before he comes. Go away. Go away. Go away. <laughs> She's all right now, Casey. Oh, I'm sorry we upset you, Mrs. Polachek. I forgot to say that we were from the Express, you know, the newspaper. Is this all right? Excuse, please, uh, Mr. Casey, Miss Williams. I, I think when you say numbers, I think you come sell Steve numbers. Well, we haven't. But even if we had, Mrs. Polachek, why should you be so upset? Oh, it's bad, it's bad. But why? Well, it's like sick with my Steve. It's like sick. Sick? From betting? Mr. Casey, now you listen. You know a man that uh, drink, maybe. No can stop. Well, sure, but... Uh... Well, numbers like that with my Steve. He no can stop. No can stop. You want story for newspaper? All right. I tell you a story. Now, Steve and me, we want farm and country. A little farm, chickens, uh, maybe cow, you know. I know. So we save money. Steve is a good boy, works on shop. Every week, bring home money for save. Three dollars, sometimes maybe five. I put money in sugar bowl. It's good. I save. Uh, go on, Mrs. Polachek. I save. I wait. Uh, there's no hurry. Good things you got to wait for. But Steve, all the time he hurry. No can wait. Young, you know, lots of time he has. But <laughs> no can wait. Yeah, I see. Then... One time, Steve, no bring money for sale. He spent three dollars for bet, for numbers. He say if he win, he have money for payment on farm. So he bet. Well, did he win? No. He no win that week, so he bet money next week. And he no win, and next week, and next, and next, and next, and he no win, never. Oh, that's bad. Every week he spend money for bet, more and more. And then he take money from Sugar Bowl. Well, pretty soon Sugar Bowl is empty. Then he take money from me, more and more and more. Now I no can pay bills. Me, Clara Polachek, I no can pay bills. And he no can stop. Clara? Oh, uh, in parlor, Steve. Well, what are you doing in there? I was... Uh, 
Oh. Steve, uh, this uh, Mr. Casey, uh, Miss Williams, my friend. Ah. Uh, yeah. Glad to meet you. Hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. Uh, Mark, can I uh, talk to you for a minute? Well, I'm here. Talk. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, in, in private. Well, we'll wait outside. No, stay. Listen. What do you want, Steve? But Ma. Well, what do you want, Steve? Two bucks, Ma. Just two bucks. Sugar bowl is empty, Steve. For my housekeeping money, I mean. It's gone too, Steve. But I need the dough. What'll I do, Ma? Stop gambling. Ma, please don't pick on me. Uh, Mrs. Polachek, we'll leave you alone. No, you no, stay. Safe. Listen. Steve, I no pick on you. Yes, you do. Don't you see, Ma? I don't want to gamble. I gotta. I lost too much to quit now when my number's bound to come up. And when it does come up, Ma, we'll be rich. What for we want to be rich? He's enough to save, pay bills, put money in sugar bowls. Yeah, sure. Lousy nickels and dimes so we can buy a farm in a hundred years. Oh, it's not true. There's lots of money in sugar bowl before... Before what? Well, go ahead and say it. Before I swipe the money to gamble. That's what you was going to say, huh? Stevie, please. Before I rob the sugar bowl, before I swipe the money. Stevie, I, I no blame you. You can't talk about nothing else but your lousy sugar bowl. Stevie. Lousy old sugar bowl with a lousy old crack in it. All empty. Look at it, all empty. And I don't care, you hear me, Ma? I don't care. I don't care about your lousy old sugar bowl. Oh, Ma, Ma, help me. Somebody help me. Steve. Oh, Ma, I can't stop. It's like, it's like being drunk or crazy. Every week I get my dough and I say... This time, I'll, I'll bring it home to Ma, all of it. And then that guy comes along with his, his lousy numbers, and I I can't stop. Those numbers, guys, Ma, I wish they was all dead. So do I, Steve. So do I. <laughs> That's what he said, Logan. I wish they was all dead. And me, two hours ago, I said, what harm is there in the numbers? Mm, you should have seen this Polachek boy, Captain Logan. Nice kid, but mm, all shot to pieces. Yeah, I know. They get like that. Well, they shouldn't. With the odds against him, the guy who bets doesn't have a prayer. Why can't you cops do something about it? That's not my department, Casey. Talk to the vice boys. They pick up the guys who sell tickets, but two more always sprout from the same spot. Trouble is, nobody knows who operates this thing. Well, I'm going to find out. How? Oh. I don't know. Maybe I'll pretend to be one of the numbers boys myself. Casey, I got news for you. Two years ago, a plainclothesman discovered their hangout was Al's pool hall over on 10th. That's all. He just discovered their hangout. The next day, we discovered him. Murdered. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. It's still on the books. Unsolved. Maybe I ought to mosey over to Al's pool. Now, uh, Casey, please. Now, even if you're a, a stinker, I like you better alive than dead. I'm glad to hear that, Annie. If anyone wants me, I'll be over at Al's pool hall. That's a nice pool hall Al's got here, huh? Yeah. Nice tables. Yeah. You're new. I ain't seen you before. I'm new. None of the boys, they ain't seen you before. Well, I'm new. Numbers? Hmm? Work for Andy? Uh-huh. South side? That's right. Andy don't operate on the south side. He does now. What do you mean? He started this morning. You mean he's taking over the Reed territory? Figure it out yourself. Well, that's good news. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, they call me Whitey. Like a game of pool? Sure. They call me Duke. Reason I cased you first off, uh, we gotta be careful. Sure. Yeah, I'll break. One ball in the side pocket. Sure. Hot today, Whitey. Seven in a corner. How's the numbers going, Whitey? Eh, fair, fair. Collected nearly three G's this week with no hits. Didn't have to pay out a cent, huh? Not one. Eight ball on the side. 
back, we got to operate careful. Sure. And those papers are getting after us. Sure. Yeah. This guy Casey over at the Express, him and a reporter named Williams. Uh, see the stories they're writing up? Uh, sure. That guy Casey's going to wake up some morning and find himself dead, you know? Sure. Glad you dropped in today, pal. What's up? This Casey's getting on our necks. Well, at least we haven't let him know who our boss is yet. No, we got to keep our mouths shut. He's a great guy, the boss. Sure. I never met him. Great guy. Sure, I guess so. Bank's shot on the three, huh? Yeah. He never comes around here, does he? The boss in a crumb bum joint like this? <laughs> Don't be funny. Arthur Matheson is a gentleman. What do you say today, Whitey? The word is to take it slow, pal. Yeah, what's up? This Williams dame and this Casey on the Express, they're finding out too much. Well, like what? Those stories they write in the Express, the cops will be turning the heat on us. It... Watch it, pal. Huh? What? A cop heading in here. Hey, watch it, watch it, watch it. There's a cop there, watch it. Casey! Oh, Casey, I just happened to catch sight of you through the window. Thought I'd say hello. How are you? Uh, oh, fine. You kind of out of your territory down here, ain't you? Yeah. Well, I've seen you, Casey. Come on. A cop called you Casey. Now, ain't that a coincidence? This guy at the Express I was just talking about, he knows a lot of cops, and his name is Casey, too. Casey, huh? Could it be you're the same Casey as that louse on the Express? What do you think, Whitey? I think you are. What do you think I got in this pocket, a handkerchief? Why, you... This is that newspaper photographer, Casey, boys. Don't move, Whitey. Don't move, anybody. I'm getting out of here. You, get away from that door. You, too. It's better. So long, boys. See you later. So this case, he just backs out of the place and beats it, boss. Uh, Mr. Matheson, uh, we couldn't do nothing. He was packing a rod. He was packing a handkerchief, Whitey. Huh? Yeah, the whole story is right here on the express, see? They call it a clever ruse. Well, what do you know? My name is in that story, Whitey. Yeah, I, I see. And I'm displeased, Whitey. Very displeased. I don't blame you, Mr. Matheson. How did this Casey person learn about me? Well, uh, he's been hanging around Al's pool hall for a long time, and you know how it is, boys. Some of the boys ain't careful like me. Some of the boys get a little licked up, and they talk too much. Yeah. Whitey, remember what happened to that cop that nosed around Al's pool hall two years ago? Oh, yeah. Now, if we could lure Casey over to the house with the silver door. Yeah, yeah, the silver door. I could call him up with a phony newspaper story. Now, better have Gloria do it. Yeah, that's better, Gloria. Have her give him some human interest story about uh, something about, let's see, oh, a kitten that joined a litter of puppies. <laughs> yeah, that's good. And Whitey. Yeah, Mr. Matheson. I note that your receipts have been extraordinarily low for the last few days. You haven't collected much money. Aren't you working, Whitey? Oh, yes, Mr. Matheson. I'm working hard. Well, I'd suggest you work harder, Whitey. Much harder. Now get going. Hello, Steve. What? You. Leave me alone, will you, Whitey? How much you want to bet tonight, Steve? I huh? tell you, leave me alone. Just leave me alone. How about that little farm your mother was planning on, Steve? All you got to do is call the numbers right just once, and it's yours. Oh, cut it out, Whitey. Please cut it out. I'm taking my pay envelope home tonight, you understand? Sure, sure. But 
You're due for a break, Steve. And 20 bucks will pay you nine grand if you hit it. I thought you guys was gonna be stopped. Nine thousand bucks, Steve. There's your farm. What do you say, bet 20? Okay, okay, 20 bucks on the same number. But this is the last time you're gonna make me open my pay envelope. That guy in the paper, that, that, that Casey, he'll get you guys, the whole pack of you. I'll tell you a secret, Steve. Casey's through. The boys at the Silver Door are gonna take care of him. Permanent. Casey, I tell you, it's dangerous. Those boys are out to get you. They're bound to be now. Oh, sure, Ann, well, but get I... this whole business up, will you? Drop it. I can't. Why not? Well... Matheson's the head man, and you found that out. Now, let the police handle it from now on. I've just been talking to Logan. The cops haven't got a thing on Matheson. They can't touch him. <sighs> That's a very sharp guy, that Matheson. He isn't, hasn't made any mistakes. Well, don't you make any. Drop the whole thing while you still can, please. Oh, excuse me, anyway. Photography, Casey talking. Yeah? Oh, where? Wait a minute. Nine, two, six. Okay. Oh, well, thank you very much. What was that? <laughs> Some dame over at 926 Bain Street. She calls me. She's got a great human interest story. A kitten got in with a litter of puppies. <laughs> How cute. That's all I got to worry about. Now, listen, Annie, about Matheson. Now, Casey, please, forget I... Matheson. Forget the numbers and keep out of danger. L -l Let's cover that puppy story, Casey. Oh, but please, Annie, Please, I... I'm scared. I'm scared for you. Please. Okay, Annie, okay. All right, I'll go with you just for a change. I'll take time off to clear my brain. Tell the desk where we're going. I'll get some film for my camera. Uh, quite sure everything is taken care of, Whitey. Don't worry, boss. Case you'll be here. Gloria phoned him with that puppy story like you suggested. You... Mr. Madison. What? Uh, that's him. That's Casey getting out of that car just across the street. Oh. Hey, he's got some dame with him. Now, don't get excited, Whitey. Remember what we planned. Let them come up the walk and ring the doorbell. Well, what about the dame? Well, the lady must suffer sometimes for the company she keeps. Okay. Now, remember, Whitey. Let him climb the porch step. Let him ring the doorbell. And then we'll deal with Mr. Casey. <laughs> This is it, Casey. 926 Bain Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Watch it, Annie. Yeah. Porch steps are okay. rickety, I guess. What? Wait, wait, wait. Hi, I... Well, oh, Mrs. Polachek. Oh, Mr. Casey. Mr. Williams, thank goodness I catch. What's the matter, Mrs. Polachek? I, I telephone you paper. They say you come here, so I come. Oh, what for? To warn. Warn? What about? It's danger. Mr. Casey, man on numbers, he mad at you. Oh, uh, well, that's old news, Mrs. Polachek, but thank you. Oh, Annie. no, wait, listen. Why, Stevie, tell me what man say. What man? Name is uh, Whitey, no? Yeah, Whitey. What'd he say? Oh, something about Silver Door. Somebody by uh, Silver Door gonna hurt you. Uh, how you say, uh, gonna get you. Casey. Easy, Annie. Silver Door. You know what that is? No. Well, you'll stay away from it, whatever it is. And I'll see to that. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Polachek. Oh. Yes, thanks for the tip, Mrs. No, Polachek. No, thank me. You just be careful about Silver Door. Yes, yeah, Silver Door, Silver Door. Sounds like a nightclub. Well, keep man. away from nightclubs. Gee. Casey, ring the bell. Oh, okay. I was just thinking about... Anne. What? The door. Wh what door? This one, right here. Casey. The house with a silver door. Come on, Anne. We're getting out of here fast. Oh. I think they saw us? I don't know. Quick. Get in the car. Yeah. Casey, hurry. I am. Take a look at the house, Ann. See anybody? Uh, no. Uh, What's I'm... the matter with this starter? Casey, the house. Two men are coming out of the house. Whitey and Matheson. Get this car going. I can't. The motor won't start. Oh, What's the matter, Casey? Motor trouble. Whitey. That's right. And this here's Mr. Matheson. Oh, hello, Mr. Casey. I must apologize about your car. An associate of mine, quite uh, mechanically inclined, disconnected a wire or something. Uh, fix it, Whitey, and then we'll get going. Now, just a minute. You may drive, Mr. Casey, but you'd better follow instructions. Whitey and I carry more than uh, handkerchiefs in our pockets. Don't we, Whitey, hey? <laughs> <laughs> Take 
your next left, Mr. Casey, please. You're not going to get away with this, Madison. Why not? Because the cops know I tied you up to the numbers racket. Go on. Well, if anything happens to Casey or me, the police will know you're responsible. Not if anything happens, Miss Williams. What do you mean? The police might very well suspect me in a crude case of murder, say, uh, shooting or knifing. But if Mr. Casey happened to drive this car off a cliff... I'm not likely to drive it off a cliff. Oh, yes, you are, Mr. Casey. Very likely. In fact, you're going to. No one will ever prove you were knocked out ahead of time, and there will be a smell of liquor about you and Miss Williams. Just an unfortunate case of drunken driving. Accidental death. Gee, boss, you think of everything. Well, I try to, Whitey, I try. Keep straight ahead, please, Mr. Casey. Never make a mistake, do you, Madison? That's what they say. Well, you just made one now. No, you just did. I said keep straight ahead. I did not, Toad. Hey, boss, he's going to come fast. I'm going to go a good deal faster. Casey, look out. There's a red light. There was a red light. Casey, you seem to forget I have a gun and I'll use it if I have to. I'm driving, Madison. We're doing 70 right now. Shoot me and we'll all wind up dead. Hey, boss, it's the cops. What do we do? Casey, look out. Boss, I'll grab the wheel. You keep him covered. Oh. Get away, you fool. Give me that wheel. Why'd he cut it? Casey! <laughs> Casey, another pillow behind your back? Oh, uh, no, thanks, Ethelbert. Miss Williams, another pillow under your... No, thanks, Ethelbert. <clears throat> Gee, you two look terrible. Got to see the other guys. Whitey and Matheson? Yeah, that wise cookie Matheson finally made a mistake. You mean going driving with you? I mean the police finally got a nice long list against him, from violation of the Sullivan Act to attempted murder, plus a confession that he was running the numbers rack. Oh, speaking of violations, how many red lights did you go through, Casey? Oh, uh, only about eight. Oh, which reminds me, Annie, do you think Logan can fix a ticket for reckless driving? I hope not. That'll teach you to slam me into lampposts at 40 miles an hour, I feel like. Well... Look, look who just came in. Hello, Mrs. Polachek and Steve. Oh, hello there. Hello, Stevie. You, uh, you feel bad, no? <laughs> we feel bad, yes. Oh. Oh, not really, though. No. Just a few bruises. Good, good. I, I come with Steve to thank. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You don't have to thank us. Oh, yes, yes. There's much to thank. Now, no more numbers. Steve gamble no more. We put money away for farm. And Steve. Yeah, ma? Money, I forget. Give me three dollars now for save. So, Miss Williams, Mr. Casey can see. Oh, okay, Ma. I... Oh, uh... Settle for a dollar and a half, Ma. Steve. Steve, you no, say... No, take it easy, Ma. Take it easy. But, Steve, what'd you do with the other dollar and a half? Well, look, I, I broke your sugar bowl, remember? And, well, you always like blue, don't you? So I, I bought a blue sugar bowl to start fresh, Ma. Oh, here. You are good boy, Stevie. Good boy. Blue sugar bowl no cost dollar and a half. Yeah, yeah, I, I know, Ma. So... Well, I had to buy some flowers for Miss Williams, didn't I? And a tie for Mr. Casey, didn't I? Just to say thanks, didn't I? Tonight's adventure was written by Alonzo Dean Cole. Scott Cotsworth played the part of Casey, Jan Minor was Anne, and John Gibson was Ethelbert. Next week, another adventure of Casey, crime photographer. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.